All right, so on to acute tubular necrosis. So earlier we talked about the three different types of causes of um, acute kidney injury. And what we're talking about now belongs in this intrinsic or intrarenal category because we're talking about actual damage to the kidney tissue, okay? Anytime you see necrosis, um, really what, what that is is cell death. Um, and in this case, that cell death has been caused by ischemia. And again, we talked about ischemia in the stroke uh, videos, um, but just quickly, there, there is not enough um, blood and oxygen and glucose and what have you getting to the cells in the kidney itself um, to feed those cells, for those cells to fulfill their purpose. Um, and as that oxygen supply is cut off, the cells die. And in this case, we're actually talking about um, nephrons, right? And so this isn't uh, necessarily, so, so some of the blood that goes to the kidney um, is there to feed the kidney itself, to feed the cells, um, to bring the, the nutrients, the oxygen, the glucose, all of that to, to those cells. Okay, so we're talking about, about not enough blood to, to those cells, and that, there's, that is so serious that it has now caused those cells to die. The cells are dying or dead, okay? Um, and so in what happens with, with this kind of cell death or dying, um, inside, I just want to pull up this other little picture here. Oh, no, that's not a, not really a great one. Earlier, when we talked about uh, the nephron right here. So inside the tubule here, this distal, proximal distal tubule, um, what happens is the, da the, the damage there, um, Oops, sorry, I wanna to get to the right slide here. Um, those cells begin to die um, and quote unquote, the basement membrane of the tools. And the only reason I bring up the words basement membrane is because one time I think I had that in a test and I, I didn't, I had the concept of what was happening, but I didn't necessarily know that it was like the basement membrane. Um, so I'm just saying that a couple of times so that you get used to the uh, where it is happening. Um, but the idea is that as those cells die, um, the epithelium begins to kind of, in the tubules, right, the inside of the tubules, begins to kind of slough off. And when that happens, it can block the flow in the tubules. And um, when, when that intraluminal uh, uh, flow is blocked, it increases the pressure, right? Anytime you have a blockage anywhere, it's going to increase the pressure. And what happens is you've increased the pressure to the point where if you look over here, say this is your glomerulus and this is your, the beginning of your tubule, here's a blockage here or an obstruction of, this is the um, inside of the epithelium that has sloughed off sloughed <laughs> off and has blocked the tubule. Um, ignore kind of this stuff here for a second. What's going to happen to the blood or the, the filtrate that's moving through here when there's a block? Of course, it's going to create all this pressure and this backup, right? And what that does is it slows down any um, uh, movement of blood into the glomerulus. And so then your glomerular filtration rate or your GFR will slow down, okay? So that's one of the, one of the effects of um, acute tubular necrosis. Um, so your, your GFR is gonna go down. Sometimes the obstructions can cause uh, so much pressure, um, they can actually break or bust open kind of the, the tube and your filtrate will uh, flow out. Um, you can also have back leaks where it's it's going back up. The idea here though is that it's blocked, that tubule, that place where I just, I should have put this here, where it's supposed to be flowing nice from your glomerulus down here, it's blocked somewhere. Okay, so all of the exchange that is supposed to be happening in here 
isn't happening and your glomerular filtration rate is going to go way down because of the pressure that's built up in the lumen. So I'll go back here. So when we talk about um, acute uh, tubular necrosis, there are three phases. So when we were talking the other day about, about these three phases, there was some confusion about whether they were uh, phases of acute kidney injury or a few uh, phases of uh, acute tubular uh, necrosis. Really, um, acute tubular necrosis causes acute kidney injury. Okay, so it's, it's, there are um, other ways to damage the kidney, but this is a big one. So really, really, they, you may, it may feel interchangeable when you're on a test, when you're writing on a test, okay? So this, uh, there are three phases. Um, your first phase is the initiating phase. So the initiating phase is basically from the moment the event happens, whatever it is that has caused uh, the, the, the obstruction, the damage, what have you, from um, until that damage actually occurs. So if, if it's caused by, let's say, I don't know, hypertension. Oh, no, actually, let's say it's caused by medication. Um, and so, you know, you from when you start taking that medication or from when it starts to cause that damage to the cells until there is actual um, damage or obstruction, that is your initial phase, okay? You don't have symptoms really at that point. It's just almost like the incubation phase, phase when you're talking through uh, infection control stuff, right? Okay, and then the second phase is called the maintenance phase. Okay, you've got three, initiation or initiating, maintenance, and recovery. They're pretty self-explanatory. I just explained the initiating. The maintenance phase is, is the maintenance of, I think of it as the maintenance of the disease or the maintenance of the problem. So this is where you're gonna see all the signs and symptoms. Your signs and symptoms, for the most part, belong in this middle maintenance phase. You have uh, decreased GFR, you're gonna have an increased uh, a BUN, increased creatinine, increased potassium in the blood. This is because the, uh, the tubules are not filtering. They're not pulling those things out of the blood into the filtrate and filtering them out through urine. They are, um, they're staying in the blood, right? And so they're gonna, your serum BUN, serum meaning blood, right? Your serum BUN, serum creatinine, and potassium are going to be high. The other thing that will happen in, during the maintenance phase is uh, fluid retention. And this is because, remember, we talked about one part of those, uh, that those, um, the distal tubule being responsible for concentrating urine. Uh, we've talked about the renin angiotensin kind of cascade, right? So what, what that tube is supposed to be doing is pulling fluid out of uh, the cells and, and using that to dilute the filtrate. So remember all the filtrate that's full of all the stuff we don't want, the creatinine, the BUN, potassium, we want to water that down and then excrete it as urine. If the kidney is not working, it can't do that. And there's other, um, there's other causes for the fluid retention, but in this case, if we're just talking about uh, tubular necrosis, um, the tube is unable to do that, and so the fluid retain is retained in the blood, in the body, okay? And that's where you get symptoms like hypertension, um, uh, edema in the body, pulmonary edema, pulmonary congestion. And the reason you get um, hypertension is because of that fluid retention, right? When you have, um, so just think of a tube with water running through it. If there's, if it's only a quarter full, the water, there's not a lot of pressure, right? But if you have more water running through that tube than is uh, the tube is actually able to hold, that pressure is really, really high. So anytime you have fluid retention, you're gonna end up with, usually end up with hypertension as well, okay? Edema is because it, it that hypertension and the orthostatic pressure causes the 
fluid to basically leak out into your interstitial spaces. So you end up with edema. Um, in fact, whenever a patient comes into eMERGE and they're edematous like that, um, for, for me, my first thought is, but I'm, I'm a cardio nurse, right? So my first thought is always CHF, but the second thought immediately is kidney. There's something going on with the kidneys. Um, and again, that can cause uh, pulmonary edema. So your patient can have trouble breathing, right? So um, the point is <laughs> that all of that stuff is happening here during this maintenance phase. Um, another thing that can happen is a decrease in urine output. And I just explained basically that if the tubule is not working, it's not concentrating the urine, or it's not diluting the urine with fluid, you're going to have less urine output. Okay. Um, during this maintenance phase, you might see uremia, which we'll go through in another video. Um, you're going to see hyperkalemia because the potassium is going back into the blood. It's not being filtered out. You might see metabolic acidosis. Um, and I'll talk more about that in another video as well. Um, most of the time, most of the time you, your sodium will remain about the same. It, it might um, get lower, but it's not, it's not one of those things on a test where, where that's what they're going to ask you about. Because when we're talking kidney injury and during this phase, it's mostly BUN, creatinine, and potassium that we're really worried about. Um, and again, during this maintenance phase, you may also see some um, hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia. This is because of the uh, kidneys uh, responsibility for activating vitamin D. And we will talk more about that again as well later. Okay, and then we have our nice little recovery phase. So because this is, um, this falls under acute kidney injury, it is actually, pro it is actually possible to reverse the symptoms, reverse the condition. So what happens in the recovery phase is we've now fixed the problem. Whatever that problem um, was that caused the acute uh, tubular necrosis is, is fixed. Um, everything should go back to normal. Uh, so in this phase, you're gonna see those symptoms we talked about in the maintenance phase, you're gonna see these kind of slowly start to uh, improve. So your urine output, for example, which had gone down, it's going to start slowly improving. You're gonna slowly have more. You're gonna start diuresing. Um, your, at first, your BUN, creatinine, and potassium will still be elevated, but slowly over that, over time, as that tubular function is completely restored, then, the kidney can concentrate that urine again, and it's going to, um, your creatinine and your BUN and what have you is all going to go down. And I think that's it for this one. And we'll move on to um, more of the signs and symptoms, which may be a bit of a repeat of this, but it's always good. More is better than less, right? Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.